By 2039, oxygen levels on Earth will be so low that it will be uninhabitable. Plants have disappeared, cities have turned into deserts, and there are only a few people left in the entire world who survive with the help of masks connected to oxygen tanks. In Brooklyn, engineer Darius has left the family bunker to clean the solar panels while his father goes to the bookstore to buy new reading materials for his granddaughter. On the way out, the father steps on rotten wood and falls through the floor, hanging from the ceiling of the reception area. The fall damaged his oxygen tank and made it difficult for him to breathe. Darius finds out about the problem via communications and runs to bookstore, where he tries unsuccessfully to save his father from the pit. Instead, he goes upstairs to grab by the legs and it works, but it's too late, the man is dead. Darius then returns to the bunker, where he tells his wife Maya and their daughter Zora the bad news delivered. Thanks to Darius's engineering expertise and Maya's agricultural expertise, Bunker has enough oxygen and plants to support a reasonable reasonably comfortable life. Darius announces that he plans to bury his father next year next to his mother, who lies in a cemetery over five miles away. Zora protests about the potential danger of, but Darius notes that they haven't seen anyone in three years, so he'll be fine. On the evening of, after the others have fallen asleep, Darius performs maintenance on the machine that keeps Bunker running and finds that the oxygen supply only lasts for two months. The computer even tells that the system has been hacked, leaving Darius with some difficult decisions. The next morning, Darius says goodbye to Zora and gives her the book her grandfather gave her. Then Zora watches as Darius walks with the body in front of the surveillance camera. In order not to lose contact with him, Zora uses the radio to get in touch with him. He tells him random stories like how he predicted the oxygen shortage at, and no one believed him, but at least he managed to build one bunker at a time. Unfortunately, Darius never answers and there has been no news from him for five months. Maya and Zora fight alone for survival. It is now their responsibility to exit the bunker and oversee the maintenance of unit. They always take a gun with them when they go outside, but Maya is still angry when Maya goes out alone just to get clothes. Luckily, the bunker has a very thick steel door and a password lock so they are safe for now. They keep each other company as best they can, but in quiet moments Darius's absence is obvious. Zora never gives up and continues to send radio messages about family memories to the pre-apocalypse. Maya doesn't give up either and often goes outside to sow the seeds of, hoping that one day one of them will actually grow. She also runs fake errors on the computer to teach Zora how to fix any problems. Sometimes Zora says that she will look for S father, but Maya reminds her that she already tried and forbids Zora to go. In the same arguments, it often ends with. One afternoon, they were outside after completing the renovation work when they suddenly saw two people with a shopping cart coming towards them. They hide behind an old car and watch as strangers try to break into the bunker. They don't succeed, but it's strange that they knew exactly which door to go to. At that moment, Maya and Zora's system reminds them of their oxygen levels and one of the strangers called Tess hears the noise. So she comes looking for them with her weapon out while her partner Lucas climbs to the roof to search for other entrances. Tess carefully approaches the car but doesn't find the women. At that moment she hears Lucas trying to warn her of something on the radio, but it's too late. Maya and Zora tackle her to the ground. Then they run to the bunker to get inside and close the door before the strangers can follow them. Then Maya gets on the comms and demands an explanation. Tess swears they mean no harm and that she and Lucas live in a bomb shelter outside Philadelphia with 25 other people. Their air filtration system recently started failing, so they traveled for three days to find Darius. Tess claims that she is a physicist who worked with him at university and that she just wants to look at the system he created so she can copy it. She even knows Maya and Zora's names, but Maya still doesn't trust her because Darius never mentioned them. Suddenly Zora turns off the microphone and starts arguing with Maya about what to do next. Zora doesn't want the people in the orphanage to die, but Maya believes that orphanage doesn't exist at all. After much arguing, Zora convinces her mother to help because if Tess can truly copy Darius' technology, they can make big changes in the world. Maya orders Tess and Lucas to leave their weapons at the door and wait on their knees. She comes out with a gun and asks Tess to tie Lucas's hands. Then she ties Tess's hands too. Maya then checks to see if there are any other weapons hidden before sending Tess to the hideout. As they are about to enter, Mika comes out of hiding and tells them to stop, so Maya opens fire and Zora comes out and shoots too. Mika is injured, 
but runs away anyway and drags Zora into the bunker. So Maya runs in too, closing the door and leaving Tess and Lucas outside. Mother and daughter point their guns at Mika and tie him up as soon as they enter the main room. Maya then uses the link to talk to Tess, who explains that it was just a misunderstanding. Mika is her lookout number and when he saw her being tied up and led away, he thought she was in danger. Maya doesn't believe her and asks her to leave, so Tess announces that she will get Darius' car no matter what it costs. Tess frees herself and Lucas with the knife and then announces that they are using drill. Inside, Maya and Zora tend to Mika's wound as they continue to argue about whether his story is true. Suddenly an alarm sounds and the computer reports that the system has been hacked. Zora and Mika try to look at the camera, but Tess covers them. She also retrieves weapon which Mika dropped while Lucas tries to break down the bunker door with a drill. Luckily, Zora has an idea and grabs some mechanical parts to assemble a small device, which then leans against the door. She activates it, sending out an electromagnetic pulse and destroying drill. Refusing to give up, Tess climbs to the roof and injects carbon dioxide into the bunker, causing S oxygen levels to drop. When the alarm goes off, Zora and Maya rush to put on their masks. Maya leaves to solve the problem and Zora stays behind to hold Mika at gunpoint, but becomes uneasy when he starts talking about his young daughter. After much hesitation, decides to share the mask with him while he answers her questions. Micah swears that they didn't kill Darius and that Tess actually knew him before the apocalypse. Outside, Lucas has to wait for to attack the door, but he gets distracted when he sees something in the garage. He drags Tess there, but before they can enter, the emergency lock is activated. Just then, Maya climbs onto the roof of and opens fire, forcing her to hide. After a few seconds, the duo comes up with a plan. Tess starts shooting at Maya while Lucas runs towards the bunker. Inside, the air is clearing again, and there is a risk that they will drop their masks, so Mika takes the chance to wrestle with the rope. Tess suddenly comes out of hiding and acts like she's giving up. But it's distracting, says Lucas, can jump on Maya from behind, starting a fight that breaks Maya's leg. In return, she hits him with a mop and hurts his ear. Unfortunately, Tess surprises her from behind and knocks her out. At the same time, Micah frees himself and attacks Zora, who pushes him off by pressing her thumb against Micah's wound. However, Micah finds her weapon and holds her at gunpoint. Minutes later, Lucas and Tess uncover the camera while holding Maya hostage. Micah ties Zora up and tries to open the door, but he can't without the code. Suddenly, he starts feeling dizzy because of all the blood he lost and falls dead on the spot. Outside, Lucas threatens to shoot Maya if Zora doesn't open the door, but the microphone is still muted and Zora can't explain herself. Thankfully, Micah's radio is nearby, so she drags it over with her feet and tells the group that she's tied up and Micah is dead. Tess demands Maya to open the door from this side, but she reveals a special badge is needed together with the code and that badge is inside to prevent people from entering. Desperate to help her daughter, Maya eventually admits there's another badge but it's far from there. She has a working car, so Tess agrees to leave with her while Lucas stays to keep watch. During the ride, Maya explains they're going to find Darius. It turns out that after he left to bury his dad, Maya found a note in which he explained the machine couldn't keep the air clean for three people anymore, but with only two there would be more time for Zora and Maya to figure out the seats. This means that Darius is actually dead and did not intentionally return. Back at the bunker, Zora orders the computer to play music Lucas appreciates. Few hours later, Maya finds Darius' body and mourns for a moment before finding the badge. The duo is ready to go, but at that moment the machine runs out of power. Tess asks for identification and points out that Maya can barely walk with a broken leg and therefore cannot survive the return trip on foot. She confesses to that she also had a daughter and promises to take good care of Zora, so Maya agrees to give her S badge and code. Before she leaves, Tess promises to return to Maya when there are oxygen left in her tank. Then Tess runs back and finally finds the bike in the center of city, so she can use it to get safely to the bunker. Using the code and badge, she and Lucas get in just before they run out of air. Zora wants to know where Maya is, so Tess tells her everything, including Darius' sacrifice. Tess wants to return with a new mask and take Maya with her, but Lucas threatens to kill Tess if she doesn't T-start working on the machine. Using S exercise, Tess opens Darius' invention window and finds a very advanced system, leaving her no choice but to admit to that she doesn't understand enough to recreate it. Lucas begins to go crazy, leading Tess to finally admit that she was lying. She had never met Darius before, she only found out about him and his family because her radio picked up Zora's messages. 
She knows enough about technology to help out at Vault, but she didn't expect the machine to be so complex. Enraged, Lucas immediately shoots her. As Zora has a breakdown, Lucas sits next to her and points out that she knows enough about the machine and the bunker, so he wants her to teach him how to use it yet refuses to untie her. Back to Maya, she sits in the car while thinking about her family. She notices she only has 21% of oxygen left, concluding nobody will come for her before it runs out. At that moment, she's shocked to see something on the ground. It's a little plant starting to grow out. She removes her mask for a second and confirms the air is getting cleaner, which gives her hope. Inspired by the desire to continue surviving, Maya attempts to charge the car's solar panel. In Bunker, Lucas throws away Tess and Mika's bodies to get rid of the smell. He then grabs a can of food, but Zora refuses to tell him where the opener is, so he breaks the can to open it. Zora calls him at because he stayed here instead of going back to help his orphanage, but he doesn't care. Suddenly, the alarm sounds, indicating a problem with the cables. Lucas agrees to untie Zora so she can take care of it, but only gives her enough oxygen for a few minutes so she can't escape. Zora climbs onto the roof and puts the cables together, only to find out that it was Maya who ruined them for. After a warm reunion, Zora tries to go back in, but Lucas doesn't open the door because wants to see she's suffering. The duo then hatches a plan. After a few seconds, the alarm rings again, so Lucas goes out and sees Zora lying unconscious on the ground. He throws dirt at them and begins to pray, but Maya suddenly shoots him, which also damages his oxygen tanks. As he tries to move, Zora becomes conscious, causing him to stumble. Maya and Zora then run back to Bunker, but Lucas manages to get up and follow them. He goes through the first door and knocks down, of them to get through the second, allowing bad air into the bunker. When the alarm goes off, Lucas demands oxygen and threatens the women with his gun. However, Zora points out that if he fires, he will cause an explosion. He allows them to fix the problem, but instead Zora and Maya go outside, closing the doors and leaving Lucas in the destroyed room. Since Lucas is not and wants to die slowly, he fires his gun and the resulting explosion kills him. Outside, Maya and Zora survive thanks to their masks and escape in a car, but in they are low on oxygen. Remembering Mika's story, Zora drives through the city with them, trying to find shelter, but they find the doors locked and pass out on the stairs. A few moments later, Maya woke up shocked, clean, and rested. The people from the orphanage heard her and saved people, and now Zora shares Darius' car with them. With the help of survivors, the mother and daughter of work together to sow new seeds and bring vegetation back to the world. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.